Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Motive, Social Motivation for the Creative Class. I'm your host, Tim Fulton, here with the Executive Director of the Greater Columbus Film Commission. Please welcome Mr. John Doherty. Thank you. Let's go, I'm gonna go ahead and identify how this is gonna go. I wanna do you, I wanna do the Greater Columbus Film Commission, I wanna talk about the opportunities that we have in Columbus for it, uh, and what the future brings. Okay. But first I'm gonna do you. Oh, no. I, uh, as a high school student in <laughs> Columbus, Ohio, I was aware that the coolest place that you could be is any event DJ'd by Mr. John D. That was you. Is you. That was. Is you. That was me. Do you own any Twitter, website, Instagram that says John D. at all? I think I still do. Yeah, then it is you. Somewhere. Then it is you. Yes, that was me at one point. Talk about your background before the film commission. I was a DJ. Is that it? <laughs> it. No. Um, uh, I had, uh, going back to high school, I was always interested in art and had always been a, a film buff my whole life. And um, I uh, started freelancing out of college, started freelancing doing design work, and started at a company that's still in town called Live Technologies and um, was uh, doing design work for them and web, web development and whatnot. And they eventually started a video uh, department in their company, and they asked if anyone would be interested in being part of that. I raised my hand, and that's how I got into the whole video part of it. Enjoyed it and, and loved editing and loved the creative process of it. So that's where it all really started and uh, did that for a few years. Then uh, just wanted to be more creative and break up out on my own with some friends and started a production company here in town, which is still here called Vital. And um, just did that for a few years and became a member of the board of the Film Commission. And then it just started going from there. And you, before becoming the executive director, started helped to start the Columbus Film Festival, or sorry, the proper title. The Film Festival of Columbus. The Film Festival of Columbus. Yes. Uh, it's uh, Film Festival of Columbus. Uh, acronym is F-F-O-C-O-L. So we call it FOCAL. And uh, we started that five years ago. That's coming up in June, June 2nd through the 11th this year. So we started that, we started talking about that many years ago. And we started talking about that before I was even part of the uh, uh, Greater Columbus Film Commission board, because we were always talking about how can we get more films to come to Columbus and shoot. And our whole idea was, okay, so if we could get a film festival started, let's invite the directors of these films, up and coming directors, to come and visit Columbus and Central Ohio and have them look around, we'll show them around, it's a great city, then maybe they'll want to come here and shoot a film. So that was our whole impetus behind the film festival. And so talk a little bit about, for those that aren't aware, what specifically the, the Film Commission does. So the Film Commission, basically what we're here to do is promote Columbus and Central Ohio as a filmmaking destination. And um, so when a film is looking around Ohio, we could possibly bring in a director, producer to look around, show them what Central Ohio has to offer, show them what kind of locations we have, and hopefully they would decide to come and film here. And then once, if they do decide to come here, our biggest job is then to facilitate conversations between the production and the city, for example, permits and permitting and, and street closures and that sort of thing. So, so we're, we're here to facilitate all those conversations and to try and make their life as easy as possible while they're here filming. I think sometimes there are some in the, um, I don't want to demean it, but amateur filmmaking community in Columbus that uh, looks at this Greater Columbus Film Commission and says, well, why aren't they helping to facilitate the work that, that we do? How would you address that? I, that's a really good question, and it's sometimes a, t a tough question to answer. Uh, we did a film summit last June, 
and we're going to do another one this June, June 9th. And um, it's, we're talking about the film industry in Columbus. And what we learned last year was a lot of people thought that the Film Commission was here to fund films, which is not what we do. You don't have the money for we, that. Right? We don't have the money to do that. We don't have the money to pay whatever. So anyway, um, yeah, we, we don't fund films, but there is, there's other organizations in town that we try to partner with. For example, the Mid-Ohio Filmmakers Association, which is kind of that liaison or hopes to be the liaison between the amateur filmmaker and people who are coming up and really want to make this a, a career. So uh, these organizations that sit in the middle, we try to work with them and, 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 and try to provide programs for them to, to facilitate the learning of filmmaking. That's awesome. And you, so we also in Ohio uh, have the virtue of having a uh, tax incentive for filmmakers that come in uh, that is a, a law that is sort of trying to be reworked or a budget line item that's being reworked at this point. Um, what's the current landscape that we sit in uh, with the um, tax incentive? So there's a, a current tax incentive which calls for uh, $20 million a year. It's a pot of money, $20 million for the whole state and Cleveland Columbus, Cincinnati, Dayton, if a film wants to come into Ohio and shoot and they qualify for this tax credit, they can get up to 30% of that back. But we all, as a state, have to share that. As of fiscal year 2016, which would have been July 1 of 2015, we used that tax credit up within three months. And that had never been done before. So what that shows is there's a lot of interest in films coming to Ohio to shoot and utilize crew and be here in Ohio and shoot here. Columbus, though, is at a deficit as related to Cleveland, Cleveland specifically, but also to Cincinnati in terms of the resources that we have available um, and what, basically our ability to take advantage of that tax incentive what what can we do in Columbus to help build it up? Yeah, so the, the, the biggest disadvantage that we have is infrastructure, crew. We don't have the crew here. It's the old chicken and the egg thing. The productions aren't here because the crew's not here. The crew is not here because the productions aren't here. So we've been fighting that for a few years. When I took over about a year ago, what my idea was, hey, let's focus on these smaller films the one million to three million dollar film, try and attract them to come here. And at that level of film, producers and filmmakers realize they're not gonna get A-list crew and they're gonna be able to, you know, pick and choose some of the crew people that don't have a lot of experience, but they can train. So it's gonna take a while for us to build that up. So it, it, we're definitely behind Cleveland and Cincinnati. Cleveland's been around, they've been doing this for many years, 10, 15 years, they're 10, 15 years ahead of us. So we're, uh, we're behind the, the, the eight ball on that, but we're, we're trying and um, I think we can do it. It's just a slow, steady progress of smaller films and I think that's, that's where our sweet spot is. I guess my immediate thought is that, that that deficit then translates to the production. To an extent, I think it's fair to say that that, uh, you're asking somebody to come in and work with a crew that they're gonna have to train a little bit, you know? What, um, what else can we offer beyond the crew to sort of say, but you should come here, you should come to Columbus specifically? You know, uh, we've had over the past year and a half, we've flown in a couple production crews and, and directors, and, and once we get them here, it's, it's, it's a somewhat easier sell because they see the level of collaboration that the city has. It's amazing how the mayor's office will step up and Parks and Rec will step up when we want help and we need help. I mean, I, I've got plenty of stories from the past, from the Travolta film and the Schwarzenegger film that were just here, when they called us and literally within a half an hour we solved a problem for them. They were like, we can't, we, we don't know what to do. They said we could get into this 
cemetery to shoot, and now we can't. And I work really closely with GCAC, the Greater Columbus Arts Council, and knowing them and all the connections that we have, the collaboration that can happen in the city really quickly is is pretty amazing. And we've had, after films have left, or after they're, they're done shooting, the, UP, the unit production manager and the line producer, they usually stick around for a month or so after the film's over just to wrap things up. And we've always had a meeting with them to find out what we did wrong, what we did right. And they've all said, by far, this city is near the top of collaboration with them and, and the city officials and mayor's office and getting things done in the city. That's great to hear. I think we, you, us, we just need to do a better job of sort of communicating that, I guess. What, um, what do you think, how can the people here, the people that are watching, be better ambassadors for you to get your job done? You know, I mean, we've talked about this. We talked about it last year. It's like creating a culture of support for film. I think, uh, I said this a, a year ago also, was I think film in Columbus needs to be embraced more than it currently is. Um, we tout Columbus as an art city, and it really is. I think we could step up as far as film goes. Um, we need to realize that film can be a real industry and a big job creator in this town. And um, we're working on a, on a few things that, that can hopefully bring jobs and, and sustainable jobs. The thing about the tax credit is with a lot of states, people will come in, use their tax credit, and then they leave. So we don't want to see that. We want to see brick and mortar companies stay in Ohio and employ people in Ohio year round and really create an industry that, that kind of doesn't exist right now. What, what are the tangible things though? Is it going to focal? Is it, uh, where can dollars be spent more that are, that, that reflect our interests? Yes, going to the film festivals and supporting independent cinema for sure. Of course, we all love to go to AMC. My wife and I went to AMC the other night to see Jungle Book, but um, you know, but try to go to Gateway, try to go to Studio 35 and Drexel and those independent cinemas, and support them, and you know, be, be open to, believe it or not, if films come into town and they want to come in your neighborhood and shoot, be open to that. Of course, it's going to be a pain in the ass sometimes, but it's it's really good. Well, and for to be the clear, though, that the way that permitting happens is they have to go around to property owners and get them to sign off on yes, it's cool if my street is closed. Right. And so be open to that and be open to the idea that you know maybe for three nights, this one night in the middle of July or three nights in the middle of July, you're not, you have to park around the corner and not, you know, right in front of your house or in your garage. Yeah, and there's, I mean, I, I, I'm not one to try and compare us to other cities or whatever. I usually don't like to do that. But, for example, in Austin, when people are shooting, people will, can walk into a restaurant and say, hey, we want to shoot here tomorrow night. It's independent film. We don't have any money can we come in and shoot? There's gonna be four of us in here. They're like, sure, go ahead. Around here, sometimes it'll be like, the first thing out of the, the restaurant's mouth is, well, how, what's in it for us? How much, how much money are you gonna pay me? Just be, just kind of be open to that and, and you know, just try your best to, to, to think of the bigger picture. I just, I, it's an interesting dichotomy seeing how much people are willing to collaborate and how much the question is, is what's in it for them? You know what I mean? And so, at, as a, you know, armchair economist, I guess I think what, what, per, what incentives can be provided? And is there more that can be done? And I, I think that that's not a question, it's open-ended, really. Um, anything else? Yeah, I mean, sure, when films come to town, it is. It's great, it's kind of quote-unquote sexy or whatever, and, it's, and a lot of times it's a, fucking pain in the ass too but it really is it's an economic development question and it really puts people to work and it's a huge ripple effect of 
you know, restaurants and hotels and dry cleaners and transportation, and it really is a ripple effect. And there are plenty of studies out there that show that it's really good for the economy. So I, I just, I want to see that happen here, and I want to see those jobs stay here and live here. And I want to put, you know, I know a lot of people who want to be in the film industry, and there's a lot of people out of town from LA and Louisiana, Atlanta, who want to move back home to Columbus because they don't want to live there and they want to come back here and work. And if we can create that industry, they're going to move back here. And same thing with, with students, you know, who think when they get out of school, I got to go to West Coast or East Coast to, to have a job. Maybe they don't have to. Maybe they can stay here and work here. Well, no, absolutely. There's a reason why the phrase is attract and retain. So, ladies and gentlemen, please thank John Doherty. Thank you very much. Thanks.